try. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about some of the other TV shows that you've done in a second, but we have to come down to it, it's kind of like Mike Brewer, Wheeler Dealer. I think people kind of it is the same sentence yeah. for a lot of people. How yeah. did that come about? Where did that start? Uh, that started a very, very long time ago, boys. You were probably still running around in nappies when <laughs> yeah. that started. Uh, so 26 years ago, I did a show on, on Channel 4. called. We were running around in nappies. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 26 <laughs> yeah. years ago, uh, called Deals on Wheels. Yes. And there was one little item in that show that I did, uh, and it was about how to buy a car, fix it up, and sell it. Yeah. Uh, and I did this little breakout item within the program, and uh, it got the attention of some people. And there was two lovely guys that owned a production company uh, that sat down with me. And then we thrashed out what could be uh, a show based around that, yeah. uh, that, that model entirely, about buying a car, fixing it up and selling it. And uh, we created a program. It was originally called Grand Autos because we were buying a car for a grand, fix it up and selling them. Yeah. Uh, but it very quickly evolved into Wheeler Dealers. I feel sad. Like, you know, when you, like, even that one sentence, I'm like, certain things that you feel like you can't really do these days. Be like, I should start off with, you maybe need a bit more capital to kind of, to yeah. get something for a uh, grand fair. these days. You're like, okay, um, scrapyard's taking more money than a <laughs> yes. grand. Yeah. Well, I keep getting people all over the world who, some people are watching the show for the first time, you know, yeah, in some amazing. parts of the world. It's been on for 20 years. And some people look at the prices and they go, oh, you should go back to the days where you were buying a car for a grand. Yeah. It was much more realistic. And I go, it doesn't exist anymore. You can't. That, you can't. You'd have to go to India or yes, go to it different doesn't countries. Exist. What is the cheapest car you'd say you've ever actually bought to then flip over? Uh, well, it'd be on Wheeler Dealers Series 1, probably, yeah. which would be, uh, I bought a little Mark 1 Mini for £300 on Wheeler Dealers Series 1. That car today would probably be worth 20 now, minis are very close to your heart, aren't they? I believe it's one of the first cars that you ever got, actually. Yeah, so I passed my test in a mini. People of my generation, my age, uh, you you pass your test in a Nissan Corsa. Micra. Or a Corsa, yeah, Corsa yeah. right? So people of my age pass your test in a mini. Yeah. So at the age of 17... And back then they were minis. Well. They were minis, yeah. yeah they were tiny yeah. little cars. And uh, at the age of 17, I realised I had a scooter at 16, a little 50cc scooter, and I realised it's not much you can do with a girl. At 16, <laughs> on a scooter. Uh, so I needed a car. So um, I, I just sat patiently waiting for my 17th birthday, bought this little mini, earring a beige, uh, mini thousand, uh, GJJ, 55AJ. Can always remember your I first love. love. That, yeah. uh, and I bought this little mini, and my mum and dad said, I think you disappeared. And that's what happened. I got this car and I vaporized, I disappeared. And that was my love of cars. It started right there. Beige? Beige, ear in a beige, I'll tell you. Rocking Strong colour. Strong colour yeah, back then. Yeah. yeah, I mean, listen, that car is the genesis of the Wheeler Dealer you yeah. see in front of yeah. me. <laughs> uh, all my success comes from that very moment. When I bought that Mini, there was, I, there was the freedom of the road. It was the fact that I could have so much fun in this tiny little space. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, yeah. I could, I could, <laughs> I could fill it with friends. We could laugh. We could Got that, a great that little e break. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we you can you can get in that car from South London yeah. and end up on the pier in Brighton within an hour. And you know, it's a time machine. It's a little time capsule, and it will put you places and and it will give you fun. And then one day, I parked it outside my sister's house, and her neighbour Jan reversed out of her driveway no. in a in a Cortina Mark V 2.3 gear. Uh, she reversed out and smacked it so hard, the insurance company decided to write it off. Oh, but I and managed. It was your baby. It's well, my baby, and I love that car. But I managed to pay twenty five pounds to the insurance company not to write it off and get it back. Oh. But they gave me the three hundred pounds for the repair, uh, of which I had three hundred quid. You know, I only paid three hundred quid for the car, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I had three hundred quid, and I'm like, wow, what do I do with three hundred quid? <laughs> my dad was a real good. <laughs> my dad was a customizer, so I thought, well, why don't I just customize it? So I painted the roof black, painted the bonnet black, Sibby spotlights on the front, mini light wheels, changed the interior, pulled the dent out, and I ended up with a car that looked so cool that within a couple of weeks, a friend of mine offered me eight hundred pound for it. Oh, so wow. there I am with a five hundred pound profit. Like, I've, I've, I've. Fall on swim pretty good here. Yeah, yeah 17 years of age. Uh, the average wage at the time for my parents was probably £100 a week. Mm. Uh, there I am. I've just made £500 in one transaction. And I thought, wow, 
I, I'm quite good at this. I'm going to do this again. So that led me on to becoming a weed dealer. And I just bought and sold, bought and sold, bought and sold. I think one thing that I, I love about this is kind of the same with us in, in retrospective in a weird way. Our, our dad was a dancer. We kind of got into the dancing world and TV and entertainment. Like for you, your, your dad was in the automotive world. Do yeah. you feel like that kind of connection is kind of generational that is what grew the excitement or was it yourself you were like actually no i i love i i found my love for the no, surely you must have been in, in in the workspace with your dad seeing him rip apart a car putting it back it's together the, the whole dna and, of yeah. me is from my yeah. dad yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean i i grew up with my dad in the workshop and reluctantly you know from the age of seven eight nine mm. uh if my dad had to have me during the summer holidays and during the easter break uh, down at the workshop in Stratton, South London. Uh, that's where I was, where I really wanted to be able to part playing football with my friends. Yeah. But, you know, we had a big family. I'm the baby of six. Uh, and it was my job to go to work with my dad. And I would sit on the workshop floor in this damp, cold workshop, or even on a summer's day in South London. And he would pass me a tool, tell me to wipe it with an oily rag and put it back in the toolbox. Yeah. And then pass me a number 10 or pass me a, a you know, a half inch Imperial. And uh, that's how I learned my craft. And I didn't know I was learning it. I really didn't know I was learning it. It was just instilled in me. Uh, and we would take work home. You know, there were gearboxes on the yeah. kitchen table and engines on the balcony. We lived in a block of flats. We are a very poor family. Um, but I, I started to see the, the riches that it gave my dad. My mm. dad was being, you know, people would pat him on the back and always want to meet my dad, Roger, and congratulate him on his latest build or his latest creation. And I could see that and I hero worshipped him. I still do today, you know, he's my my hero. And to see that, you know, as a young man, you're like, I just hope that I get that respect one day, you know, when I grow up. Uh, so when I bought my scooter at the age of 16, I turned to my dad to help me customize it and modify it. It was a mod. Yeah. I wanted, you know, chrome side panels. I wanted airbrushing <laughs> on the side. So he did all of that. And it was very, that was very quickly adapted into the world of cars mm. uh, when I was 17, you know, modifying and custom, customizing my own cars. Uh, and it all come from my dad. And it still does. You know, there's probably not a decision I don't make today where I haven't phoned my dad and just spoke it through with him. And, Quick little recap. Yeah, a little Quick recap. Little, yeah. and just spoke <clears throat> it through with him and just had a chat to him about it. And he, he'll very quickly tell me that's a crap idea or, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> that's, I, love that. they, I find yeah. they always tell you straight. Mm. I do love that. And it's the memories that you create actually in it. And then that follows on through your life. Like our dad was our dance teacher. The memories I have with him in the studio, some are amazing. Some you just want to. Of course, yeah. But, you know, <laughs> but that's it's... the point of a father-son relationship, yeah, is it? Or father-daughter yeah. relationship. Uh, you have to rub each other up the right way and the wrong way yeah. to see how far it can go. But, you know, I'm I'm really blessed. that I've yeah. got this, uh, not only have I got this amazing uh, family, I've got an incredible family, but I've also got an amazing wife yeah. who literally pushes everything that I do yeah. to the to the limit. You know, she's she's sort of the throttle pedal behind me. It's so nice to see that y your your business, your relationship, your daughter, like everything's always so. And even the research, like you, we come before we do this podcast, we try and get as much research possible. And the one thing that was always at the forefront was um, successful, happy husband. God, daughter, like, it, and it's so warm and enriching. Because people always think like business is the biz biggest success, whereas actually it's it's the kind of being able to kind of hold your family together. Family, it's, together. Yeah. it's family. Time. It's always family first. You know, family comes first, and you know, success comes from. I think um, that's why we love watching the shows. I feel like when I watch with you, you, you watch a show and you, you you're a very become, wholesome man. It just feels you really great. Are. It's it's like you, you love to watch and you you want the next episode or you want to kind of um, even the podcast well, we did with you. It was so you can tell enjoyable. that you one you you know what you're on about you are in an industry where you truly are at the top of your game you know what you're on about so it's enjoyable to yeah, watch well i've done it all haven't i i love the, it i've had the broom in yeah. my hand i've done the mechanics yeah. i've done the sales i've owned the businesses i've done the lot best car that you've uh flipped over then best car that you've you've sorted out what is it that's a really good one because i get asked this question obviously a lot. that mini you said you love yeah, mini yeah mini is my f sort of first love but you know personally i've flipped some amazing cars mm. in my personal life i managed to buy john cooper's mini cooper yeah, uh, yeah. when i was That's in america yeah, yeah it was wild so that was a pretty good one to flip um but one of the highlights i think that stick out for me is that lamborghini Uraco that i found in poland uh that was in somebody's frozen garage and i managed to get it back here and we restored it put it on the road in the uk and um i sold it thirty five thousand. i paid twenty thousand. Sold it thirty five thousand. It's currently for sale for one hundred and fifty five thousand. Holy! So I'm not so much of a clever wheeler dealer. Am I? <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's on to the next one. On yeah. to the next one. <laughs> on to the next one. Uh, but that was a car I was really proud of because 
Uh, that's got mechanical fuel injection, a Lamborghini yeah. Raco. And there's probably two We'll put a picture on for everyone that doesn't know what car it is so they can see what it is. There's probably two yeah. people alive that would know how to work on that car, yeah. you know, and uh, we taught ourselves. We we learned it and we taught ourselves. Was it an absolute pain in the backside? Oh, yeah. You can't believe it. It yeah. was just hideous um, because yeah. it's... It's an Italian supercar from the 1970s. It is the equivalent of a Swiss watch that's frozen in time. That, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Somebody gives you this, this little trinket, and when you take it open, bits come out, and you do, the oh, bits don't go back I've, in. I've never seen yeah. that before. You know, like a, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've ever taken a laptop computer apart and explodes, yes. and then no, you can't put it back together. Yeah. It won't go, like, well, that's what oh, the Lamborghini left out. You're like, this is supposed to be in there. You're yes. Like, uh, what's this bit? Or in the case of the Lamborghini Araco, what's that stuff? You know, yeah. there was tons of it left over. But we learned it. You know, we learned it. We put that car back on the road. And so much so, it's living and breathing today. It's been resold and resold. And its value today is is five times what I sold it That's for. That's so, so cool, it's, though. It's incredible. You, you're a part of that. There's yeah, I'm so part of many, that. There's thou- there are literally thousands, thousands. I want to say millions of cars out there, which you've actually been a part of. Which uh, is yes. Absolutely so awesome. we, we bought and sold and flipped. Oh, I can't tell you how many cars. It's, it is thousands. Yeah. Uh, but personally, see, a lot of people think this is just Mike Brewer is the TV persona and the yeah. TV presenter. Uh, but no, I, I, this is my garage. You know, these are my vehicles here. This is another part of my, my life. I've got a, a car dealership both up in Sheffield. I've got a car dealership here in Warwickshire. Uh, I buy, sell, flip. Mike, Mike Brewer Motors. Mike Brewer Motors yep. yeah. is up in Sheffield. And this is called One Automotive. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're is, sat here now in what is... A gorgeous, awesome workshop, but I believe it was not so pretty when you. Um, no, this was got an engineering shop. Really good. <laughs> one, one owner from New, built in the 1980s, one owner from New, full service history. I remember walking in here with my wife, uh, and you walk through this door into this collapsed office on the greasiest floor you've ever seen. <laughs> And there, you couldn't actually see the fabric of the building. It was all engineering <laughs> yeah. um, machines everywhere. And they've been here since 1982. Uh, and it was a mess. The whole, it was thick with grease everywhere. The, whole, the walls, the ceiling, everything was thick with grease. Well, um, you can see it. You can off the floors here uh, now. <laughs> yeah, you could. So I, I, I could see it. You know, I could see the vision. I could see the building. And I thought, Do you know what? This is where I'm going to put my car collection, my cathedral. Uh, and this is where I'm going to build it, my 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 space. And um, it's a nice size. I've got lovely tall cabinets around it. And, <laughs> you know, I spent a, a, a fortune of money making it the yeah, way I want gallery. it. We, we've been viewing talking. gallery, yeah. We office. were speaking earlier. Apparently, you're going to get a, a sim in there up there. I think. Yeah, we're going to do a, sim, bit, a sim racer. I built that balcony. But they could create a whole little episode doing that. It's all fastest lap times. Put it on yeah, TikTok. Yeah, what we need is little... Fasaro yeah. Sim. Fasaro yeah. Sim. Fasaro yeah. Sim. Fasaro yeah. Sim. Yeah. Yeah, that lovely company, Fasaro Sim. Supply me a sim. Supply me a sim, Fasaro Sim. So the owner of Fasaro, we went and tested their sims them at them we tested their f1 sims before they announced that they, they are the official f1 and i said phenomenal. maybe speak to them about getting like a like a ford transit you know what i mean as the on an f1 track yeah, track, yeah. yeah brilliant yeah brilliant well they around. just had a ford transit go up pike's peak uh, oh, which was wow. a, a yeah hot rod Crazy. you know a race car full yeah, transit yeah, yeah. uh compete on pike speaking i think it finished in the top 10 so uh, oh, yeah wow, get them to do nice. that for sorry sim but I, I wish they would reach out to me and just supply me a blooming machine yeah. I've, I've plugged them enough <laughs> but um no i actually built this place and the balcony uh, that's cantilever i built it with enough strength you can put a car up there so it, the, it, it is yeah. L- mm. It's legit solid. Like, I'm not worrying about that falling down. How, how, how are you going to get the car up there? Well, um, we just lift it up, you know, with a crane. With a yeah, crane. Yeah. yeah. But we, I actually uh, have, was going to put the minis up there. You know, you, I've measured it. I'm not going to lie. That would be absolutely yeah, three beautiful. There, red, they would fit blue. perfectly yeah, up great, there as it? well. Yeah. yeah, it'd be really good. But um, no, this was the space that I created. Uh, so I could relive those moments from my dad. You know, mm. I could be in the workshop, my own workshop. Um, it was a moment which I'm sure you've had with your dad as well. There was a moment when my mum and dad come up to see me uh, last summer and uh, or the summer before, actually, and I walked them through the door and my dad see this for the first time. And the realisation. His yeah, heart yeah. just went... Yeah. And it, but you could see him bursting with pride. But I think it's taking that back... not happened yet with my dad yet. <laughs> 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 I'm sure it has. Yeah.
Just before we go anywhere, thank you very much for listening to Freedom Impact Trust. We love your feedback, so please do leave a review because it helps others find us, doesn't it, Curtis? Yes, it does. Comment, subscribe, like, share it to a friend. Let everybody in the world know that this is the podcast that you're enjoying and let us know what you loved about it. We enjoy talking to you guys. We enjoy having fun and we can't wait to see you and hear you on the next episode. Plus, we want to thank our sponsor, Fint, the financial investment app, making investing easy from as little as £50 a month. You guys are awesome. We love you. We're part of you. Don't forget, it's all through three portfolios, AJ. Nice and simple. I know. Have a great day. See you later, guys.